Today, we are going to look at the, the Clean in Place CIP application. It should take between 45 to, to 60 minutes to get through the, the 29 slides uh, that we've got. Let's have a look at uh, what the, the Clean in Place definition is. So the, the best definition I could actually found was that given by the Society of Dairy Technology Manual. And that is, uh, and I'm just going to read this ver verbatim, the cleaning of complete items of plant or pipeline circuits without dismantling or opening of the equipment and with little or no manual involvement on the part of the operator. The process involves the jetting or spraying of surfaces or circulation of cleaning solutions through the plant under conditions of increased turbulence and flow velocity. And as we go through this presentation, we're, we're going to look at what the different bits of this mean and how we achieve it. So the objectives are to make sure everything's clean, essentially. So anything that products might touch, be that vessel, equipment, pipe work, is all left clean and sterile, but without disassembly of the particular elements. So it, it doesn't involve, and this is the, the part where we talk about the, the reduction of an operator's time. So it shouldn't involve disassembly, which would add time uh, or anything like that. So it needs to be a process that can clean without the disassembly of the equipment that we're using. We want to make sure that we avoid cross contamination between product changes. So certainly in dairy applications, for instance, you might have different flavors of yogurt, let's use an example, that will change uh, from production run to production run. So if you're making your strawberry yogurt and then you're going to make vanilla yogurt, you don't want cross contamination between the two flavorings. So you want to, after you've made your strawberry yogurt, you want to make sure that your lines are clean of all the, uh, the, uh, uh, the media, the product from the previous application before you start manufacturing your vanilla yogurt uh, to avoid that cross contamination. We, of course, we want to guarantee the consumer safety. This is especially important in, uh, in food and beverage and uh, pharmaceutical applications. So we don't want any bugs, bacteria, uh, other undesirables getting into our products that could then damage the health of, uh, of a consumer. And we want to make sure that our plant's running as efficiently as possible. So we want to speed up the, the time that our processes take. So these cleaning processes do take a considerable amount of time. So we want to make sure that it's as efficient as possible to reduce the downtime, avoid unnecessary heat losses uh, and increase energy requirements. And these days it's becoming more and more important to minimize the water usage. Uh, so several of the stages that we, we'll be looking at this afternoon are rinse stages. And, and some CIP applications, you can recover the, the, the rinse, the, the water used within rinse. So we want to try and look at a, a system where it minimizes our, our water usage. Certainly in uh, applications such as pharmaceutical, you will typically be using a, a high grade of purer uh, level of water, so WFI, pure water. In some applications, they might even use ultra pure water for these rinse uh, cycles. So the principle is with the aid of an installation, now that can be fixed or, or mobile, the technician cleans the product lines and any pipe uh, or vessels that are attached um, <clears throat> using several different stages along with rinsings. Uh, so the stages are, are typically using an acid or a base and a disinfectant interspersed with several rinsing cycles to make sure our lines are, are nice and clean. So where do we use CIP and what the what the industry that use it? We've already mentioned uh, that the dairy industry is a very heavy user of, of CIP. A brewery industry uh, also. Pharmaceutical, cosmetics and, and chemical. You'll also find it in plants such as paint manufacturing and uh, glues and this kind of thing. As you can see with the paints, cross contamination would be between colours. and. Burkitt worked on a, on a project in the last couple of years where a company was making screen wash and they were getting cross contamination uh, between the, the high performance uh, pink screen wash and the, uh, the standard blue screen wash and ended up with, uh, with purple screen wash, which now interestingly has become a, uh, a part of their product line, but more by accident than, than anything else. But it's these specific ones at the top, certainly food and beverage, pharmaceutical, that is very important for us uh, to use the CIP to make sure our lines are clean.
CIP's target is to, to clean different types of what we call soils from the pipework and the equipment that we're using. So by soil, it can be anything from bacteria, so biofilms and molds, chemical residues, mineral oils, uh, lime scale, biomolecules, fats, any deposits of, uh, of pipe work. So it can be anything from the visible, so such as your lime scale, your oils, your fat deposits, but just product that coats the pipe work, coats vessels that would have to be cleaned out before another production run. But also the invisible, and so these are your bacteria, your biomolecules that you want to make sure are cleaned out before you start your, your next production cycle. How it works, it's, it's composed of three actions. So the first action is, is mechanical. This is generally the stage on the, the, the first uh, step of our CIP process, where we have a pre-rinse step. And we use uh, typically water to uh, at high velocity, and we use the turbulence within the water to remove most of the visible solids, anything that's that's still, you know, coating our pipework, coating our vessels, to remove that. Uh, so by mechanical, we're just talking about the mechanical action of the the water flowing through the pipework at high velocity, creating a turbulence, and it's that turbulence in the in the water that is the mechanical step of our first step of our cleaning. We then use uh, acids or bases, which would be the chemical step, and this would start to, to break up and remove uh, remaining residue by a, by a chemical action. And then our final step would be a, a sterilization or a sanitation step, and this is to remove any remaining microorganisms, the biofilm, the bacterias, anything that might still be left over by our chemical step. And it also rem um, uh, finally removes the, any residue of chemical that we have left in the lines from our, from our first steps. So as I've mentioned, our first step in our CIP process is the pre-rinse. So this is where we're putting water through our, our pipework, through our equipment, uh, either hot or cold, to, to use this mechanical action of the, um, of the high velocity water, so the turbulence in the water. So we'll look at a, a cross section of our, of our pipework. So the, the pipe here is the, uh, the black circle on the outside. If we took a cross section down the pipework, uh, you'll be able to see down there and we've got something coating the inside of our, our, our pipe. As we look along it, we can see the, the, the coating material left along there. We've also got scale, we will have bacteria in there as well. So the first thing we do is we introduce our, uh, our pre-rinse. We use the mechanical action of this pre-rinse step to, to loosen, dislodge any kind of uh, large amounts of soil and flush those through our system. So hopefully by the time we've finished this step, all we're left with is our pipe with our remaining, it could be uh, scale, uh, bacteria, everything else ready for, for the next step. We then add our detergent step. Uh, so in this uh, step, our operator sends hot caustic or acid solutions through the pipework. Again, it's typically at high velocity because we still want this mechanical cleaning action as well as the chemical cleaning action uh, of the acid or the base. So again, we start with our pipe work to be cleaned. Uh, we put through our, our detergents and that starts to remove the, the large bulk of the rest of the material that uh, we have. But it's not going to take everything out. And typically between this, after this step, we would also have a, uh, a rinse stage. So we would rinse this through after this to remove any remaining loose particles, any chemical that's left within our pipework and our equipment. And then we move on to our sanitization step. So this is where a, a sanitization chemical product is sent through, and this is to remove any bioorganisms, bacteria, um, to use to make sure that our pipework is uh, completely clean and sterile. So again, looking down our pipework, we introduce our sanitizer. 
but even after this we can still be left with a residue of sanitizer so our final step uh, and very important of the, the CIP process is to use clean water so during some of the other rinse cycles between the other steps uh, it is possible to recover the rinse water that you might use uh, normally food and beverage companies will try and recover some of that water pharmaceutical companies prefer to use a, a clean water at every step but the final rinse sh uh, must be clear water to remove any remaining chemical residue uh, any kind of to leave us with a nice clean pipe now these kind of systems come in all kinds of different forms from the very small some of you might have uh, seen these these are typically and they, they can be used in in quite large sites specifically if they're they're just wanting to clean yeah, specific individual uh, vessels or pipework you might see a little mobile unit such as this so on here uh, we'd have the operator controls we've got our acids and bases on here in the tanks we've got our, our sterilization chemical in the in the blue tank we've got all of our hose connections going to and from our uh, our vessels there'll be a connection on there for for generally for for clean water typically a little mobile uh, skid like this uh, would use an electric heater but they can be uh, connected to a to something like a steam source if the appropriate pipe work uh, is available uh, we've got a question from Greg um, so asking if all CIP cycles are flowing no so they, they don't have to be Greg so obviously you can just do CIP using the chemical and the the sterilization steps but of course then you you lose your your mechanical action step but something like a, a, a vessel where we would try to reintroduce that mechanical step would be something like a spray ball where you're actually using the mechanical action of the water hitting the sides of the vessel as your your mechanical step but obviously on on much larger vessels you would then leave it to, to soak as well it's only really that as you're first introducing the um, each of the part of the process that you get this mechanical action generally the turbulence or the the most turbulence that you get would be at the uh, the front of the the water or the chemical slug moving through your pipe work uh, so certainly mechanical uh, pipe work and things like valves heat exchangers it would always be flowing but certainly vessels uh, you can have static and once the process once you've done it through you will generally have you know you, you can leave it to sit at a temperature uh, for a while as well it mostly comes down to, to the individual site and what they feel comfortable with and what they're looking to to achieve from their cleaning cycle something like a pharmaceutical site they're going to be much more uh, rigorous in their cleaning uh, so again it, it it all comes down to to the individual site as to what their process is and what the level of, of cleanliness and uh, sterilization that they feel that they need so moving on this is a, a skid that actually uh, Burkitt has made for, for one of our OEM customers so this is was made completely in-house uh, everything including the vessels the control panel the heat exchanger uh, obviously for those of you who are on here that uh, are aware of Burkitt products it's uh, complete with with all Burkitt products uh, the Burkitt flow wave on there as well and we'll look at this system in a little bit uh, more in depth at the end of the presentation just covering the types of products uh, that Burkitt can offer for CIP it doesn't have to be on a mobile skid like this the, the, the same products can be used on a on a fixed installation such as this one so this would be a, a kind of medium sized fixed installation this would be a recovery system where we've got three uh, three vessels <clears throat> and then moving up to, to the really large kind of installs such as this for for really large pharmaceutical uh, food and beverage installs where you know they're, they're looking to recover they're looking to do uh, CIP processes almost continuously depending on which bits of their, their pipe work they're shutting uh, down uh, so you can see this install uh, has a lot of mix proof uh, valves installed on all the product and chemical lines this is so that they can still run uh, processes while other bits of the process are, are being cleaned so they they have a constant cycle 
example of CIP solution uh, around their plant, uh, cleaning out unused bits of the plant while other processes are, are still being used. And that's the this is the kind of install where you would see a lot of these kind of mix proof valves being used. And certainly an area that Burkitt can, can help in all of these control heads that you see installed. Burkitt can offer our, our type 8681, a great upgrade to, to these kind of sites brings you the advantage of the the Burkitt solenoid pilot valve technology and has recently been uh, upgraded with things like IO link to, to fit in with uh, industry 4.0 and a modern customers digital feedback requirements but if we look at a, a two of the the most common kind of systems that you're going to find at a typical site so the first would be uh, what we call a single pass CIP system so the, in this kind of system we uh, we have our uh, our buffer tank here where we uh, we make it up with our with our water supply we have our pump and then directly into our pipe work we can inject our caustic solution our acid solution our uh, sterilization solution now typically these are going to it, it can be done cold typically they uh, the manufacturers of these these chemicals will give an ideal working temperature and typically you will find that they are significantly over ambient temperature so you will find some kind of, of heater based on this can be steamed a lot of the mobile ones you'll find you'll have an electric heater on there but we'll be heating this solution up by some means we want to monitor things like the, the temperature uh, so we'd have a, a temperature control system here to make sure that the uh, the temperature of our CIP solution going out to our plant is at the uh, the manufacturer's recommendation. Again, we uh, we want to make sure that we get quite a high. Um, it, it, it's a fluid velocity, but depending on the pipe work, we can actually measure that velocity using a flow meter. Now, a flow meter will give you volumetric flow but from that volumetric flow you can then calculate your flow velocity going through you know if you know the diameter of the pipe work that it's going through you can equate that to a flow velocity and we'll also measure conductivity on here conductivity is a great measurement of how much uh, of the chemicals that we're introducing and can also give some kind of feedback on how clean your uh, your equipment is on the on the return line as well and we'll also measure flow return uh, as well uh, analyze any leaks and see when our process has, uh, has stopped the other typical sign of system and these would be more your fixed kind of systems as we saw in the in the previous pictures would be a recovery cip system and these are the ones where typically we're trying to recover the uh, the water uh, so from our rinse cycles and where we'll recover those to try and uh, keep our uh, our water costs as low as possible but also we've, we've heated some of this we will probably be uh, putting the different chemicals into to each tank uh, we'll have things like level monitoring on this but effectively it's still the same downstream of our um, uh, of our pump we've still got our heater we're measuring our flow and temperature uh, we've got our CIP supply uh, back we might be trying to recover some energy by use of a, a secondary heat exchanger from our CIP return if our CIP fluid still has heat in it we might as well use some of that heat to try and heat the the CIP uh, solution going back out to our process we're still going to be monitoring things like conductivity and flow but the difference here is we're going to try and recover some of these rinse cycles back to our buffer vessels um, rather than put it straight down the drain um, reasons for this so single pass systems are typically considered to be more hygienic whereas the recovery systems are less hygienic because we're reusing uh, fluids that have already been used for for cleaning processes so certainly pharma uh, biotechnology applications they're more likely to use a single pass system recovery systems you're more likely to find in in food and beverage single pass it, it is a lower capital cost uh, smaller space requirements and it gives you this very low contamination risk but the downsides are that you're using a lot more energy and water uh, it takes a longer time there's longer delay between each process so despite the fact that it's a lower capital cost this would be considered the more expensive application to, to run the, the less efficient 
but it's this this contamination risk so again it's more your pharma biotechnology companies that will be using single pass cip systems the recovery cip yes they're, they're larger systems that we saw in the pictures so there's the higher capital cost there's a larger space requirement from that and there is a higher contamination risk and again this comes down to the individual uh, site to to analyze what their contamination risk is but the advantage of this are the lower use of, of water the lesser energy it generally takes uh, less time to get the uh, the system the, the application back up and running again and it's useful for for high frequency applications where you might just be doing a small production run again let's take yogurt as an example uh, you do your your batch of a flavored yogurt then you want to make a different flavor then a different flavor it's all the still the same base yogurt all you're doing is adding different flavorings so you want to have that as high frequency as possible so that's the kind of place that you would be using a, a recovery style CIP process to make sure that that time delay between each process cycle is as short as possible. So if you look at a, uh, a PID overview of, uh, of a typical kind of application, uh, again, this would be your, your typical kind of single pass system. So we have our, our makeup tank here, or more advanced ones, we will typically, you know, the, the larger kind of mobile rigs, we'll be monitoring the level within this CIP tank, the pH as well, to make sure that our, um, our pH level. So, so this is to, to make sure that we're getting the, the right balance of the, the water and our chemical within this tank. We've got our heat exchanger here for heating up. So the heat exchanger is supplied by steam on this particular one. Here's our temperature control part where we're controlling the temperature, uh, going to our cleaning objects and, and using that to control our input of steam to control the temperature of our CIP solution out. Uh, we've got obviously got a lot of valves. We've got our steam trap set down here, our flow meters, a, a lot of different items on this. And when we look at it physically, and this is where we come to, to the system that we make for our OEM customer, you can see this in its real form. So here's, here's our tank. Uh, our heat exchanger at the back here, all the valves to control the, the, the flow of CIP in and out of here. We've got things like our flow meter. This one's showing our, our flow wave on here. We're using uh, pilot air to control all the pneumatic valves, our level sensors, the controls themselves. Uh, we've got our detergent tanks uh, on here. Burkitt doesn't have mixed proof valves in our range. We would typically use a, uh, a block solution or our Robolux valve that you can see up here, which would be a multi-seat diaphragm valve solution to achieve the same result as a mixed proof valve would do. And for those of you who are uh, more aware of, of Burkitt products, uh, we've got things like the, the 8615 are the control panels that, that Burkitt builds in-house, the 8098 flow wave uh, and a load of others. But we will start to have a look at these, these products in a bit more detail and show you some advantages that, that using Burkitt products can have. So starting with things like uh, the supply and the return valves for our CIP, but even the steam valves as well. So I've just mentioned our, uh, our multi-seat block. So this would be our 2034 block. So this gives you, you minimum dead legs. It ensures the separation of the fluids. So again, this is, would be what we would use to, to ensure that we don't get any mixing uh, of the different product between the, uh, the product uh, and the CIP solution. They're all able to be fitted with our with our element control heads, uh, which should give you know a, a nice hygienic uh, external service to be washed down, as well as the air recycling. So we're looking to make sure that the use of the air within these systems, the pilot air, is kept to a minimum. And we have a multitude of, uh, of solutions uh, that's available to fit into, be it a mobile system or a, a fixed install system, depending on how, what the customer's looking to achieve. We've got a multitude of body styles that can be used to, uh, to achieve this. Uh, the other valve that I mentioned uh, was the Type 2036 uh, multi-port diaphragm valve. So this achieves much the same as our, our 2034 does. But what we have with the 2036 is we actually have two actuators and two valves in one. So for things like mobile skids where space really can be at a premium, 
or if you have an install, we have certainly put Roboluxes into sites on CIP applications where space really is at a premium. Certainly underneath uh, installed vessels, things like that, where fitting a, a larger block like this might be an issue. A Robolux can really help with the space saving. It also takes the, uh, the, the, the dead leg to another level. Because we have two valve seats right next to each other, it reduces the dead leg between the valves to an absolute minimum. Uh, and it also reduces the number of valves, number of welds that needs to be made. And again, so much the same as the 2034, we have a multitude of different bodies depending on the customer requirements and what they require from their particular uh, system and application. Looking at more basic valves, one of the valves that we use on, on the, the, the skid that we produce for our OEM, uh, along as other fixed install sites, are things like our 2100 angle seat valve. Uh, so this would be a great val valve for use on things like the steam supply, to shut off the steam supply when the system isn't being used. Again, it's our, our element design actuator. It can be fitted with our, with our element control heads. We see uh, a lot of issues uh, with customers fitting specifically rotary valves on CIP systems um, where they can have an issue with, with the, the chemicals uh, aggressively attacking specifically the stem seals. We don't have that kind of issue with the, uh, with the angle seat valve. That's not to say that the uh, that ball valves can't be used in, in hygienic applications, they can. But certainly for applications like CIP, where you would expect to be continuously switching on and off the, the steam supply uh, as bits of equipment need cleaning, don't need cleaning, something like the, high, the 2100 is an ideal solution to make sure that you don't have have to maintain these valves as much as you would say a, a ball valve and reduces the amount of maintenance that's required also. We would use for the, for the temperature control part we can use something like our 2301 glow control valve. Again, element actuator to give us the uh, the long lifetime. We can tune the, uh, we have several seat sizes, so we can match up the, the pipes, uh, the, the port connections to the customer pipe work size, but make sure we get the, uh, the finest control that we can out of this by making sure that the, uh, the valve is correctly sized for the, the customer's application. Uh, tank bottom valves, much the same as the uh, the diaphragm valves that we looked at on the previous slide. Uh, we have our, our diaphragm valve solution available as a tank bottom valve, the type 2105. Same technology again for the actuator, but again on a direct tank ba uh, bottom mounted fitting. So again, just space saving, making sure that we're reducing any dead legs, certainly within our vessels as well, so our vessels can be completely cleaned, rather than have a stub of pipe work that's very difficult to clean out the bottom of our pipe. Uh, of your vessel you mount a, uh, a tank bottom valve and this means that the uh, the whole vessel can be correctly uh, correctly cleaned uh, as well as just the two two way two one oh three uh, valve itself now, this is one we're going to look at in a, in some more detail so some of you may not have, have heard about this we've, we've had this technology for a couple of years now and it's called our tube valve body so this is where we use a hydroform tube in the in the place of a, of a forged or a cast body diaphragm valve the advantages here, it's, it's easy to install because it's a lot lighter in weight, but the advantages are actually an increase in production time. Now, CIP is a, is a temperature controlled application. So we're, we're heating up CIP so it's, so it's hot and we're using the, the hot CIP to give us a, a good clean. Now, the problem with a, with a typical forged body uh, diaphragm valve is that these, once you've heated them up, they take a long time to cool again. So again, if you've got something like a, a dairy or a brewery application where you're putting cold beer through, through a valve, you don't want that valve holding up heat. You have to wait for the valves to cool before you can start your, your production again. So using something like the tube valve body gets us down to a to an acceptable temperature much quicker than a forged body diaphragm valve does. So using our tube valve body diaphragm valves can help customers reduce the amount of time between their CIP cycles to enable them to, to increase the amount of time they can be producing product rather than cleaning out their, their pipe work. 
Moving on, we're uh, moving on to, to automation of the CIP process. So as I've mentioned before, for those of you, again, who aren't aware, Burkitt does make control panels. Uh, we build these in-house. Most of the ones that we currently build are designed around our valve islands, but we can build them for, for a multitude uh, of other applications. We've put control valves in them to try and protect control valves from, from aggressive atmospheres. We build ATEX rated systems as well. PLC systems, you know, with touchscreen HMIs, whatever a customer requirement is, Burkitt can make you a control panel. Uh, this shows one of our hygienic control panels. Uh, so typically we would use a hygienic stainless steel control panel for a CIP system, but we can make them in GRP, pressed steel, painted cases as well, whatever a customer requirement is uh, for these kind of control systems. We have our new range of, of valve manifolds. So the 8652 and 3 airline or the airline fields. So these have been specifically designed um, to be able to be incorporated in customers digital communication systems. So the, the 8652 specifically is, is designed to be incorporated right at the bottom of our control panels. So it reduces the requirement for a large control panel with individual uh, pipe runs between the valve island and the bulkheads in the panel you can mount the out 652 right on the bottom of the of the panel and then connect to it via most of the mo more common uh, digital communication protocols that are currently available we also now have available our 8653 which is our airline field unit and these are designed to be used without a control panel so you can mount these directly on a on a rig depending on the the kind of connections that have been specified they're ip rated up to ip67 these are designed to be connected to the Burkitt system bus, so the bus, but we do have can open and IO link available with these systems as well. Many of you uh, who have been Burkitt customers will know our 8691 control head. So again, this is uh, designed that we can connect to a customer's digital communication. And then we have our high visibility LEDs built in so a customer can see what's going on. But it's our control heads in use with our element con uh, valves that mean we have our air recirculation throughout our valves and gives us our very good uh, expected lifetime uh, of our valves. Something like the 2100 angle seat valve that uh, I showed you e earlier. Fitted with a control head such as the 8691, we would now have an expected lifetime of that valve of 7 million cycles. Our 8693 is our process controller that's integrated into our control heads. And again, CIP is typically a temperature control application. So we can use something like our 8693, connect a temperature sensor directly to it and have a localized temperature control loop that's very easy for the customer to adjust uh, and commission directly at the point of control rather than trying to do it for a PLC system. And again, uh, our process valve training, we goes into the pros and cons of, of both methods. Uh, looking more at the quality control, we have our, uh, our Type 8619 multi-cell controller. This aids us in, in CIP because it means we can use cost-effective blind sensors uh, without transmitter heads. So this is where we would be monitoring uh, things like pH, conductivity, uh, flow temperature directly without the need for a transmitter head built into the sensor. So it removes cost from the sensor directly and the multi-cell can convert these raw signals directly in the pro to the process signals that we need to, to run our system. So certainly with a CIP application where we've got a multitude of, of different sensors, it can be very beneficial to put a, uh, something like a, a multi-cell in as it reduced the cost of the, the, uh, the sensors themselves and can show a large cost saving to the customer directly. The other thing that we've spoken about is the uh, is our new hygienic flow sensor, the, so the flow wave. Uh, and again, I'm going to go into this one in a in a little bit more detail. So we have a, a lot of customers, specifically in the food and beverage industry at the moment, that are using flow waves to try and reduce the uh, the CIP cycle time of their process. 
Now, the the flow wave, its headline uh, feature is that it is a, a very hygienic flow wave, uh, flow sensor. So it's designed. There's, there's no protruding electrodes or anything like that. You know, it's a it, it's a bare pipe that you can look through. It's very hygienic and gives a very accurate indication of flow. However, what our customers are now doing it is they are using what we call the density factor uh, and the acoustic transmission factor, uh, which are our two additional parameters that the flow wave can give to a customer to identify changeovers of liquids. Now, this is specifically important in the CIP process because at the moment, most customers do their different steps of our CI process based on a time. And that time can be different from customer to customer, depending again on the level of cleanliness that they're looking from their system. It can be anywhere from 15 minutes up to 45 minutes um, that they'll be running each step for. You know, so any improvement that we can give them uh, reducing this time is, is good. And the reason that they do it for extended time is to make sure it gives the, the acids, the, the bases time to you know, dissolve the, the, the soils uh, and remove those soils from our pipework. But until we had the, the, the flow wave available, there was no actual way of measuring when the soils that we were recovering from our, uh, uh, our processes had dropped to an acceptable level. But you can see here now on the graph, by using the density factor, we can actually see these differences. So a customer can quite easily analyze when the level of an acid or the, the soil has dropped to a certain point that it's safe to then proceed to the next step in their, in their cleaning cycle specifically when they're actually using the rinse cycles because it's very easy to tell the difference between the chemical and water going through so when they're doing the rinse the flow wave is is helping customers by identifying the point where the uh, the concentration of the uh, the cleaning chemical has reduced to the, such a point that they can stop the the rinse uh, cycle so it it a helps speed up the cip process but it also reduces the amount of water that they're using on their their cleaning cycles some customers are, uh, are are reporting back that they have managed to, to almost halve the amount of time that their CIP process now takes them purely by going on these kind of figures. So analyzing at what point they would consider their pipes to be clean, setting up switching points within their, their PL system to identify these levels of the density factor coming out and then using those those points to switch to, to the next point in their, their the next step in the, the CIP process. But moving on from that, Burkitt also has available uh, specific hygienic sensors available for use in, in CIP uh, and product applications. So our 8201 pH uh, measuring system is a, is a perfect example of this. This is specifically designed to connect to our multi-cell unit. So it only gives a raw millivolt uh, output from this sensor. That the multi cell can then take and then convert into a usable process signal. But on this, we, uh, we have a special glass free probe. Uh, this tank here is full of electrolyte. And what we have is a constant wash of, of FDA approved electrolyte over the, the pH electrode. Uh, to make sure that a it's kept completely clean so there's no products allowed due to this flow there's no products able to get back up into this probe and it's designed to be cip compatible and sterilizable as well so it's perfect for use on on cip applications alongside our hygienic conductivity sensor again made as crevice free uh, as we can possibly get it high grade stainless steel and again these are available with and without uh, transmitter heads so we would typically use the one without the transmitter head connect it alongside our ph sensor to something like a multi-cell and by doing that we would be able to show a cost saving to the customer by using these kind of sensors 
we also have things like our 8138, our radar level measurement device. Again, these are available with hygienic clamps on, stainless steel uh, transmitter heads for use on, on hygienic applications. Our 8325, which is our, our new range of pressure transmitters, again available uh, with hygienic uh, clamp connections on there for hygienic applications and our range of PT100 uh, thermometers. Again, we would need a um, temperature measurement of our, of our CIP solution going out to our uh, process. But what we're also finding, another benefit of the flow wave is the flow wave also measures temperature media. So actually we can use the temperature output from our flow wave and remove this all together. But if a customer is looking just for the, the thermometers, Burkitt also has those available. And all of those products combined are all the kind of valves, controls and quality analysis products that you would need to use to manufacture and produce a complete CIP system. So Burkitt can uh, provide all of these products to a customer for enabling you know, uh, using things like the 8098 to remove, uh, remove the, the uh, amount of water they're using, uh, things like the, the tube valve body diaphragm valve to remove the energy and again improve the time and all of these can be advantageous to, to customers who are have uh, CIP systems on their site. Thank you very much everybody for joining us this this afternoon I hope the uh, the training has been informative for you uh, if you do have any questions at uh, any other further point or you uh, would like to talk to Burkitt about any of the products that we've uh, we presented to you today uh, please get in touch with either myself or your your account manager who will be very happy to 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 help you with any requirements you might have